Okey okey minta maaf minta maaf ada gangguan teknikal sebentar tadi. Uh, Walau bagaimanapun we are back we are back live. Thank you very much for your support. Please uh, comment share. Alright. Uh, mari uh, kita sambung balik uh, Shamila. Shamila you are referring to membeli hartanah dalam lelungan melibatkan uh, harga. Uh, so harga itu bukan maksudnya murah. Uh, tetapi juga daripada aspek nilaian dia uh, memang uh, terbaloi maksudnya uh, yeah. tak ada penambahan tak ada manipulasi harga dan sebagainya so uh, Syamila maybe uh, Syamila boleh continue further ataupun uh, uh, teruskan dengan uh, perbincangan tadi ok uh, jadi uh, seperti saya katakan tadi memang tidak ada manipulasi dalam harta penjualan harta melalui lelungan awam eh? kerana har, harga itu ditetapkan oleh jurunilai dan uh, lelungan dijalankan berdasarkan kepada harga tersebut jadi tidak ada uh, involvement daripada agent atau mana-mana pihak ketiga yang dapat menambahkan harga dan menyebabkan pembeli tidak dapat membeli pada harga pasaran jadi melalui lelungan awam pembeli pasti akan dapat beli dalam harga pasaran That is the uh, most important part of auction. Okay. So, uh, maksudnya harga tidak dapat dimanipulasi dan uh, semuanya memang ter, uh, termaktub dalam proclamation of sale ataupun perikanan jualan lelong yeah. uh, dan di mana-mana saja. Harganya masih sama. Dia yeah. tidak berbeza daripada satu tempat ke satu tempat apa ataupun daripada satu ejen ke satu ejen. Yeah. Sebab harga result dan bank draft Uh, bersama uh, Sharon uh, Mungkin kita boleh uh, Lebih mendalam uh, Mendalami bahagian Ketelusan uh, Dalam lelongan awam Hartana Bagaimana pula Sharon Mungkin mungkin Sharon boleh introduce yourself Before you start Sharon, please Hello, hi, selamat petang everybody Good evening, those who was with us Last week, welcome back Another very interesting topic. Um, okay, so uh, my name is Sharon Jitkor. I um, am um, practicing as a convincing lawyer uh, dalam uh, bidang harta tanah. Um, so, um, okay, saya minta maaf sebab my bahasa Melayu is really not as good as Puan Shamila's one, but I will try. Okay, so um, uh, As what Jivan have asked me just now, ah, ketelusan, it's transparency. Okay, so bila kita membeli harta tanah melalui auction, uh, apa yang you nampak itu yang you akan dapat. Alright, so what it means is, uh, bila uh, you uh, nak uh, go for an auction property, you will be, you have an option uh, untuk mendapatkan memorandum uh, sebelum you pergi. Uh, bid for the property all right so in dalam memorandum itu dia ada syarat-syarat dia ada terma so syarat-syarat is there terms and condition is there everything is there so kalau purchase price is like what shamila says if it's it's fixed all right tiada perubahan tiada manipulation tiada manipulasi oleh pihak agent atau even owner all right so apa yang you nampak Uh, di dalam uh, memorandum itulah harga rumah tu sampai you dapat uh, masuk rumah tu sebagai owner so in between uh, 
tiada any uh, surprises, tiada kejutan, you know. So what it also mean is, uh, macam ni. Sekarang uh, bila masa MCO, kita banyak buat kes subsil, alright. So dalam kes subsil, purchase price dah ditetapkan okay. oleh pihak uh, agent or owner, right? Uh, ditetapkan. So now when uh, dah tahap MCO ni, kes tu tak boleh jalan. Alright, kita semua kena duduk rumah. So case tu stuck. So siapa yang akan jadi feras? Owner. Owner is frustrated sebab uh, dia tak boleh dapat duit. So dia feras sebab dalam masa so masa dia jual rumah ni dengan uh, uh, dengan uh, pembeli, dia telah menetapkan satu harga maybe maybe it's uh, harga rendah sedikit. Uh, mungkin dia ada condition mengatakan yang okay, saya jual pada harga ini but you kena complete dalam masa 3 bulan atau 4 bulan. Alright. But sekarang dalam uh, masa MCO, you you have no choice. We are all stuck. So owner frustrated. So owner bagi tahu dekat pembeli, okay saya nak mark up or saya nak terminate. So pembeli uh, is like a victim. Okay. Dia jadi mangsa sekarang. Alright. So macam mana dia nak Uh, proceed bukan salah dia juga sebab uh, lawyer firm tutup, pejabat tanah tutup, pejabat duty stamp tutup. So dia tak boleh nak buat apa-apa. So owner pula very upset because owner is not getting money. Owner cakap okay, sekarang uh, dah sampai tahap CMCO, uh, I nak tetapkan syarat baru. So they come up with new terms and condition. So comparing to auction, you tak akan dapat situasi begini. Because from day one, bila you dah dapat memorandum tu, harga yang you nampak dekat memorandum, itu adalah harganya. There is no third party, there is no owner yang akan datang um, uh, 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 tukar purchase price. So, benda tu tak akan berlaku. As opposed to a subsale matter. Alright? Thank you, thank you, so, Sharon. Sharon, saya berminat dengan subsale comparison dengan uh, hartanah uh, lelongan ini, Sharon. Yeah. Uh, Sebenarnya nampak, Cher, uh, katakanlah, uh, I just want your experience untuk di uh, share dengan uh, all your viewers. Jika uh, hartanah lelungan ini dibeli atau dibina, semua terma-termanya telah pun ditetapkan. Dan dalam uh, 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 manakala bila kita beli jual melalui uh, uh, normal way of doing lah, eh, kata ada seorang pembeli dan penjual beli melalui agent dan sebagainya maka di sini akan ada masalah pula iaitu terma belum ditetapkan apa perbezaan kedua-dua ni uh, kedua-dua ini ya uh, Sharon okey Jiwan Perbezaan tadi Jiwan dah dah bagi tahu, it's very clear. Uh, auction terma-terma telah ditetapkan. Even sebelum you sign, you bayar 10%. Uh, melalui subsil belum ditetapkan. You are just you 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 akan sign a booking form dengan agent. Uh, di dalam booking form tu ada harga rumah, right? Then perjanjian jual beli akan uh, ditandatangani mungkin dalam masa 21 hari bekerja, 30 hari bekerja. So, dalam uh, tempoh masa itu, apa-apa pun boleh berlaku. Yeah, owner boleh owner boleh dapat uh, another uh, buyer who is willing to pay a higher price. So, change of mind. Dia tukar fikiran. So, that is bound to happen. So, that is a, a very uh, perbezaan yang ketara sangat. Uh, auction, subsale. Uh, tema-tema ditetapkan, subsidi tema-tema belum ditetapkan. It's a, it's, a, it's a very good point to to note, iaitu terma itu penting sebab kita boleh setuju dengan harga, tetapi penjual itu mungkin dia nak cash ataupun dia nak 30%. So ini merupakan antara terma-terma dia. Kemungkinan dia kata dia lepas dia jual duit dah terima, dia nak 
still duduk dalam rumah tu untuk lagi 3 bulan sebab rumah yang baru dia belum siap. Yeah. So ini merupakan terma-terma yang belum ditentukan lagi. Uh, boleh dikatakan begitu Fiona? Yes, betul. Memang uh, dari semua segi yang seperti Jiwan terangkan tadi, uh, dia uh, belum di, apa-apa pun belum ditetapkan. So bila dia hmm. akan ditetapkan Actually nak bagi tahu even you dah sign SMP pun owner boleh menukar fikiran. Oh. Pernah berlaku, pernah berlaku. So uh, walaupun kita dalam masa uh, tempoh perjanjian itu masih valid, uh, owner masih boleh menukar fikiran. Uh, ada situation where owner uh, decided to terminate the SMP just like that. Uh, but but like what given you said that even uh, pembayaran deposit belum ditetapkan. Dia nak 5% or dia nak 10% or 15% or 20% belum ditetapkan. So you don't know. You don't know what you are going into. So there is actually advantage buying property in auction. There is, definitely. Yeah, in the sense that we were just talking about from the purchase price, from the transparency of what you are getting yourself into. It's clear. Um, although, although we have discussed about due diligence earlier, yes. uh, point is that you can actually buy this property provided you have done the due diligence properly and uh, we assume we have done the due diligence. Yes, correct. correct. You're right. right. Okay, uh, I would like to take one question from our uh, viewer. Ada poten- uh, Shamila, this is for you. Ada pos- potensi tak? Fakta di dalam memorandum tak betul? I mean, alamat salah? Or caveat tak betul? Jamila? Fakta dalam memorandum, is it? Yes. Saya rasa mungkin uh, condition of sorry, proclamation of sale. Maybe they have some some uh, differences in 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 information or something like that. So, uh, ada tak potensi fakta salah? Kalau ada terdapat uh, fakta yang salah, ia akan di, dibetulkan uh, sebelum lelungan awam itu dijalankan. Because when the lawyers do the paperwork for the auction, definitely they will check and verify every information contained in the memorandum or the, pro- the proclamation of sale. So it would have been identified at that stage itself. Uh, so Erina, memang kemungkinan boleh ada Uh, just to share uh, or to add on to what Samila said just now. Sebagai pelilu, uh, kami pula diberi satu tugas untuk menjalankan uh, lelongan. Tapi lelongan itu bukan sahaja pada hari lelong. Sebelum hari lelongan, kita akan menerima semua dokumen daripada uh, peguam bank uh, di mana dinyatakan bahawa kami telah di ataupun pelilu ini telah di lantik untuk menjalankan lelongan tersebut. Maka kami akan diberi semua dokumen di mana kami kena menyediakan proclamation of sale. Proclamation of sale kami yang sediakan. Lepas kami sediakan proclamation of sale, kami akan hantar kepada lawyer for lawyer to have to I'll see verify lah. Lepas dia verify, dia tengok semua information betul, dia akan bagi kita satu green light kata uh, semua information is okay for you to get another approval daripada Mahkamah. Kami kena bagi um, the proclamation of the sample proclamation yang telah di read through by the lawyer. Kami akan bagi sekarang pula kepada mahkamah untuk mendapatkan kelulusan. So mahkamah pula akan buat another verification um, berkenaan dengan tarikh, um, um, information at tanah, which is the price dan dan banyak lagi. So, kita ada two layer of uh, checking lah. Kalau valuation report salah, ah, kemungkinan sini salah lah. Uh, otherwise, there will be no issue. So, lepas lelongan, tak mungkin ada uh, kesalahan sebab whatever it is, we fall back to the proclamation of sale. Can we say like that, Samila? If yes, say, yes. We, because memorandum of sale is actually another set of document for us to sign. Tapi dalam tu saya tersilap masuk tarikh ataupun uh, harga ataupun mungkin uh, saya tersalah masukkan uh, lot number. It go it falls back to proclamation of sale. Can we say yes, that? Yes, yes, yes. There are instances, ah, yes. uh, whereby 
contract or the memorandum of sale, there will be some errors there. There are instances where I come across. Huh? So we relied on the proclamation of sale and we rectified the mistake. Okay, so okay. It, it didn't affect the sale at all. All right. So I, I just, uh, can I, yeah, 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 can please, I just please, add, please. add on? Please. Okay, please so uh, uh, sh the changes in sharat sharat uh, may not occur, but there are instances where sometimes um, title, geran, sama ada nombor geran betul ke salah. So sometimes, um, geran uh, telah dikeluarkan oleh pemaju, tetapi the defaulter belum buat tukar nama right so at that point of auction the title masih atas uh, title yang lama is under the old title so there are situation where the only um, mis i won't say a mistake it may be a, a information where no one knows until the lawyers uh, starts going through the documents and doing a search and finding out from the developer. So in that instances, the developer is the one who confirms that that title appearing in the proclamation of sale uh, refers to this current new one, it's the same one. So, so that has happened and that has been clarified as well. So it's not a major thing, uh, it's not a major default uh, on the part of the proclamation of sale. Um, I'd like to add on to that particular topic, I will go into detail, Sharon. I'm talking about there will be no issues, tak ada masalah-masalah lain. Sebab apa saja yang muncul, kita boleh rely balik kepada proclamation of sale atau siaran jalan belok. Tapi, uh, saya boleh lampak ada limitation of time, 120 hari. Up, daripada aspect ini, Sharon, berbanding dengan sub-sale. Usually, sub-sale akan kita boleh kata ada kelebihan sedikit bolehkah begitu dengan 120 hari ini ataupun 120 hari ini cukup uh, sub sale normally uh, dia punya syarat is uh, completion period is 3 plus 1 so 30 uh, 60 sorry 90 days plus another 30 days so 120 days is there the only different is uh, lepas 91 hari interest is running on 8% per annum Right, uh, so you have to complete in four months, but your last one month has got interest, right? Oh. Uh, in an auction situation, dalam proclamation of sale, there is 120 days. Only after 120 days, I mean, it depends whether it's payment of interest or you got to uh, apply for a court order for an extension. So, in situation like this, where title uh, is issued but not transferred, uh, I mean, based on our experience, we have completed it in 120 days. There wasn't an issue unless uh, unless there's a situation where the developer cannot be located, but which is highly unlikely because you all have, uh, the, the auctioner has done their part in checking on the existence of the developer, right? So yes, yes. Um, I would say, uh, based on my experience, I have dealt with auction properties and subsale properties, majority subsale properties, but I've completed my auction properties within time. We never went beyond 120 days. Oh, but for okay. but for subsale properties, we have gone beyond 120 days. I see, I see. Yeah. All right. Thank you, thank you, Sharon. Um, Shogi, I couldn't understand your question. So, end of the day, it's based on mutual understanding, right? So I, I don't understand on that part. Maybe you can uh, ask me or ask the question again. Uh, Swara, okay. Uh, there's, there's a comment that Swara tak kurang. Okay, never mind. Let's, let's go back to our, the next part of our uh, discussion today. Okay, hang on. So, uh, bagaimana pula dengan ketulusan, uh, Sharon? Maybe uh, uh, Sharon or Shamila can take up that, that question. Shamila? Yeah. Bagian uh, transparency. Banyak mana transparency dan bagaimana Shamila rasa transparency itu sangat penting uh, sampai ia boleh dikatakan merupakan satu kelebihan dalam memberi hartanah dalam lelongan awam. Okay. 
Melalui lelungan awam, kita akan membeli satu hartanah yang di, uh, dijual di mana harga akan ditentukan, semua syarat-syarat jualan akan ditentukan dan uh, kesemua uh, information-information berkaitan dengan hartanah itu akan terdapat dalam proclamation of sale di mana kita boleh dapat uh, daripada Lelongan, um, pelelong, uh, pelelong yang menjalankan lelongan itu kamu akan dapat sesalinan, kamu boleh request daripada pelelong uh, kita nak tengok uh, proclamation of sale and then uh, melalui proclamation of sale kamu boleh mendap, uh, membuat carian-carian tertentu di pejabat tanah untuk menentukan uh, keadaan harta itu kerana melalui lelongan awam kita menju- uh, harta dijual seperti dalam keadaan sedia ada iaitu as is varies basis. So yes. penjual dapat memastikan apakah keadaan sebenar hartanah itu sebelum penjual pergi membida. Sebelum penjual memasukkan ceknya 10% untuk membida, penjual sudah dapat semua information. Dan ketelusan juga dapat dilihat bila uh, dari segi harga seperti yang saya terangkan tadi ya, harga itu memang harga sebenar harga betul harga pasaran tidak ada manipulation manipulation daripada mana-mana pihak dan uh, kamu akan dapat harga yang sebenar dan tidak tidak tertipu sama sekali uh, if you compare with subsil di mana harga ditentukan oleh tuan punya dan juga ada manipulasi oleh ejen dalam keadaan-keadaan tertentu eh? bukan semua subsil dimanipulasi dalam keadaan tertentu Uh, harga akan dimanipulasi oleh ejen. Jadi penjual tidak dapat uh, satu harga yang betul. Atau okay. kita boleh bagi, kita boleh cakap bahawa uh, ada potensi untuk situasi itu berlaku di mana dalam yeah. subsidi uh, tiada check and balance. Kemungkinan yes, yes. kemungkinan itu sebabnya kita boleh kita boleh uh, apa sih uh, branded atau tag dia sebagai Ketulusan itu kurang. Ya, ketulusan kurang. Compact kepada, kepada harga uh, harta yang dijual melalui lelongan, uh, ketulusan subsil mungkin kurang sedikit. Lagi satu, pada harga pada hari harga uh, harta itu dilelong, penjual akan berada di sana, akan membida untuk membeli har, hartanah itu dan pada masa yang lain, pembida-pembida lain pun akan berada di sana dan akan berlaku um, persaingan. One, persaingan ya yeah. one bidder will say okay uh, reduce okay uh, the 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 registrar might say okay the next call uh, increase 1000 so one bidder will lift up his number and say okay i i'm i'm offering to that price and then subsequently the uh, registrar will say okay so if anybody want to add okay another 1000 maybe the other fellow also will lift up his number so Uh, pembeli dapat melihat sendiri ya proses pembelian itu proses tawar menawar proses pembidaan itu ya, berlaku di depan mata pembeli sendiri so uh-huh. you know you know uh, you know what are you buying and you know how much you are, you are buying and how many people are willing to buy at higher price so you you will have a satisfaction you know when you walk out from the auction you will have a satisfaction kamu akan dapat puas hati oh saya sudah membida untuk harta harta ini mengikut uh, harga yang ditentukan kemudian mungkin dia akan naik sedikit tapi kamu akan rasa puas hati kerana kamu dah terlibat sendiri 100% dalam dalam pembidaan itu uh, if you compare to subsil of course you 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 will not have that situation eh, whereby the price is fixed by the owner and communicated to you by the agent so you wouldn't know the true price of the property uh, I would so like it, to add on, add on to what uh, Shamila said because we have a very good question from Erina uh, there is some property expert mengatakan pihak bank akan hantar runner untuk menaikkan harga lelongan is this possible? pihak bank akan hantar runner runner uh, basically somebody to manipulate the harga boleh 
Um, <laughs> I I would not say who will send the runner, but but in certain auction, uh, it happens where there'll be like you know syndicates and all that to to, to then, do, even do. even even to say that, Sh Shamila, I would like to also add on. In order to become a bidder, you need to put in a ten percent deposit. Correct. Yes, you need to put a ten percent deposit. And this deposit is actually given to a high court. Yes. I say, assuming this this auction is a high court auction, okay? Can the bank send somebody, put a ten percent deposit, they bid, and suddenly they become the winner? Can they take back the bank draft? Cannot. So. Cannot. There's a risk if, let's say, we were to say bank is going to send a runner to increase the price because bank got a lot of things to lose if anybody else were not to bid above whatever price that they wanted to increase to, nobody bid. They wouldn't take up the unit. So it's going to be. A risk for the bank to play this kind of card. So I don't, I don't actually believe that there's a runner uh, where the bank yeah. will appoint in order to increase the price of the property. Because I always see uh, this comment. I would like to add on to what Shamila said, uh, Shadow. Uh, maybe you can give me a few minutes for me to describe actually what happened during my time uh, when I do, whenever I do my auction. And when I meet some of the clients, they have this misconception of uh, auction. They always say, no, la, I don't want to go. Why? Uh, see, uh, if I go to the auction, uh, there will be somebody increasing the price, you know. I was like, increasing the price? What do you mean? You have a budget. You have a limit. You bid until that price. La. What do you mean by people trying to increase the price further? Then let it go. You go until the price that you want to bid, you stop. Anybody else want to bid higher than that, let them take up. But for you not to go at all, thinking you will lose and you need to buy above the market price just because somebody will manipulate, I think they've been misguided by someone or somewhere uh, while they were uh, growing up. What do you what do you think about that, Sharon? Uh, uh, it reminds me of having a lot of touts in the court going around. You know, it's I think that's what yeah. she meant. Um, it's difficult because, like uh, what you explained, ten percent has to be paid. Uh, why would the bank want to actually send a runner and take the risk and put the ten percent there and let it go? As far as the banks are concerned, they want the property to be sold. They want their money back. You know, yeah. outstanding, and it has been defaulted for many, many months, maybe even a year, a year plus, two. So they want their money back. So there is, it doesn't make sense uh, for a bank to send a runner. But there may be other, uh, I mean, other, like what Shamila said, it may not be sent by the bank, but it may be sent by other parties who uh, doesn't want the property to be sold. Um, V very difficult. We, we do not know. Um, no, Sharon, but anyway, even, okay, assuming it's not bank or it could be anybody else, but aren't they taking risk? If let's say I'm going, I'm sending somebody and say, look, I tell you what, you go in, you beat, you make sure you increase the price, 200,000 reserve price, you increase to 220,000. Let's say I offer 210. Somebody outbid out me 220, I say 230, then they say 240, I say 250, and nobody else bid. And I become the highest bidder. I supposed to push the price higher, end up stuck with the property. Yeah. Where my 10% is stuck. So it's, it doesn't make sense. But what I feel, what happens is that uh, sometimes. Uh, they feel auction is actually a place to buy cheap property. That is the reason they have this mindset thinking whenever I go and bid, 
If I don't get at this price, that means somebody is there purposely pushing the price higher. This, this could be one theory that, that wrongly uh, uh, interpreted interpreted by, by the public. Yeah, but, but that's why we are having, that's why we are speaking about transparency today. Uh, yeah. You know, that it's all Ketulusan. transparent. Ketulusan. Uh, everything is there. Uh, nothing is hidden. Uh, you are dealing with a licensed auctioner. You know, you're not yeah. dealing with someone you don't know uh, or he presume, he says he's an agent, but actually he's not an agent. So it's uh, very transparent. Uh, so, yeah, so not I... I bad, not talking bad about some agents. No, Sarah. yeah, I, we are I not. to highlight on that. Huh? Yeah. There are certain agents who are actually linked with some real estate company and they are genuinely doing the business and they're very focused on client or client centric. But there are a group of people, they call themselves auctioner. Uh, don't take me wrong, not the auctioner that you see in court or in any auction holding a mallet. Uh, holding this. Um, they call themselves auctioneer because they, the, they're a public that still don't understand the meaning of auctioneer. You'll be surprised. I was approached one time by one this particular buyer. Then uh, he was sitting beside me. Then we having coffee. I don't know him. And uh, he asked me what I'm doing. I said I'm an auctioneer. Oh, I came here. No, I, my friend also an auctioneer. I was like surprised, uh, asking him uh, because auctions not many. And uh, you know a certain group of people who's who and everything. Then I asked him who's the guy. Then that's a guy walking to him, uh, wearing a sandal and uh, a jeans and a t-shirt. Then he said he's an auctioneer. Then I was out of curiosity, I asked him, oh, you're an auctioneer. Which state are you from? He said, no, no, I'm not an auctioneer. Then I looked at the buyer. So people have mis misinterpretation of even the word auctioneer. They look at agents who is involved in auction related properties a lot as the auctioneer. Something different, huh? Yeah, interesting. You will be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what happening to the public. That's why Koshi community basically was established just to be the front liner when it comes to authenticate auction information and bidding knowledge because there are so much misinformation in the market a lot of rumors how will you know whether the property that the agent is giving you is actually in auction how do you know you will say never mind you can trust me you see most of the buyers they are not even trusting the lawyer Sharon, Shamila, sorry. You know what they trust? They, they stop at a traffic light. They see a yellow signboard, a plastic PVC signboard, where it is written in a marker pen, urgent sale, single story house, below 30,000 uh, value. You know? And people start calling that guy and, and register with him. Whether the information is accurate or not is secondary. That is the reason we are so much so so frustrated. Why so many people get cheated? Whenever you don't have the knowledge of identifying who's who in the market and what are the procedures and who to refer to until then there will be people getting cheated. That is the reason Koshi community taking this step to be the authenticity verification center. Any information, come back to us, we can get you. So I would like to take one question, Sharon. Do we need to pay RPGT tax if we bid and win the property? So I think uh, we need to, this is from Nicholas Pung. 
Maybe you can uh, explain a little bit what is actually RPGT and when you need to pay the RPGT. Uh, RPGT is real property gain tax. So uh, it's you. it has to be uh, filed in uh, to the Lembaga Hasil Dalam Negeri. Either you are a disposer or an acquirer. So in a subsale transaction, both the owner files in and the purchaser files in. In an auction property, uh, normally it's uh, it's uh, court, high court auction. It's by way of court order. So there is a CKHT3 given by the bank uh, to us to submit to the lembaga. So CKHT3 is for the owner to say that there's no tax. Okay. Then comes the uh, acquirer, which is the bidder. He doesn't pay tax. When you buy a property, you don't pay tax. It's only when you sell a property. So we do submit real property gain tax, but there is no payment to be paid by the bidder. Uh -huh. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Uh, maybe, uh, Samila, you want to add on something? Uh, yeah, as, as what Sharon has said, huh? when you buy a property, you don't pay uh, the tax, RPGT tax. It's only when they sell only the, the disposer will sell, will have to pay the tax. All right, all right. Okay, um, we are in the middle of our one hour session. So please, uh, um, to our viewers, help us to share, comment, and uh, please share with as many people as possible because Koshi community is actually taking the first step in Malaysia. And we are the first organization that purely involved in authenticating information and also sharing the knowledge of how to bid in an auction. So coming back to our topic today. So we have done transparent, so we can say the pricing, transparency, and also the due diligence uh, can be done upfront before we even go to the bidding. So um, compared to buying property through subsale, um, what can we say about saving time, Sharon? Uh, a lot of time can be saved by buying property through auction. I'm, I'm smiling talking about this because um, I know how much of time we spend handling subsale properties. It's 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 not. Um, I won't say it's not easy. It, it's our forte. It's it's uh, it's our professionalism doing it. But it's the time we take to do due diligence. All right. For auction property, uh, you have got a proclamation where everything is there. All information is there about uh, the the documents which were signed between the owner and the bank. Uh, then you comes uh, the details of the property. Uh, then you have the sharat. You have the price. Then you have the sharat. So everything is there. So when you talk about uh, subsale property, you firstly is negotiation time. Okay, you need to negotiate the price with the owner or the agent. All right. So first round tak jadi. Second round negotiate tak jadi. Okay, third round uh, owner cakap, okay tak apa saya agree nak nak jual harga rumah ini. Uh, tapi uh, you kena selesaikan uh, uh, all the transaction within tiga bulan. Kalau you tak boleh selesaikan tiga bulan, then saya nak harga yang ini. Then dia tukar harga. So, uh, the, the the timing taken uh, to begin with that part. Okay? And then, you sign the SNP. You have time to sign SNP. So, uh, purchaser nak sign SNP, owner pula ada tiga nama, uh, dua overseas, satu kat Malaysia. So, Malaysia kita suruh sign dulu, then kita kuria dekat overseas satu, yang ketiga tu kuria lagi. So, time untuk signing. You already spend maybe almost a month to get the SNP signed. Alright? Lepas dah sign, tak apa. Then you pergi check, then your lawyer akan check, eh, berapa uh, nak check maintenance? Uh, lawyer minta owner, uh, boleh tak bagi salinan receipt uh, maintenance, uh, api air, cukai tanah, cukai pintu. So sebab kita, mungkin sebab pembeli dah ambil loan, so kita nak bagi pada bank lah. So tunggu owner. Owner cakap, eh, owner tak bagi sebab uh, ada outstanding. So ada outstanding, owner tak ada duit nak bayar. 
hmm. ambil masa drag drag again sampai owner bayar dan kadang-kadang owner negotiate dengan pembeli suruh pembeli uh, boleh tak pembeli bayar dulu uh, nanti bila dah dapat harga belian uh, balance purchase price tolaklah dari sana so timing alright then uh, datang masa nak bagi kunci so bank dah release duit kepada pejabat peguam sebagai stakeholder so sekarang peguam bagi tahu owner owner Uh, kena uh, dah dapat kunci. Owner kata, eh kenapa tak cakap awal-awal rumah saya ada banyak barang. Kena kosongkan rumah, ambil masa. Uh, saya nak minta dua minggu atau tiga minggu lah. So, timing again. Kena keluarkan barang, uh, bagi kunci kepada pembeli. Pembeli tak boleh nak masuk rumah. Pembeli tak boleh nak buat apa-apa dengan uh, rumah until the house is vacant, kosong. So, as what we uh, spoke about last week vacant possession so it's not vacant sebab ada barang okay and then kalau rumah tu ada tenant dia lupa nak bagi so katakanlah bila owner nak jual rumah pada pembeli owner cakap okay uh, saya uh, tenant tu uh, saya kena bagi notis untuk dia keluarlah sebab pembeli cakap saya beli rumah ni untuk tinggal saya tak nak tenant so saya nak pemilikan kosong lah so owner lupa nak bagi notis pada tenant Uh, tenant pula kena kena bagi masa untuk dia cari rumah lain drag lagi so in that aspect to handle a sub sale uh, transaction timing all those things i mentioned tadi uh, from start from signing smp kepada pembayaran bill uh, bill kepada uh, mem, uh, bagi pemilikan kosong semua ambil masa so se- se- so sebab tu tadi uh, untuk mengendalikan kes sub sale 120 hari memang tak cukup. Memang akan lepas 120 hari. Ah, something very interesting ni saya share. Terima kasih, terima kasih. Uh, uh, with, uh, share oh, your experience. Yes, yeah, sorry. Please. Saya nak tambah satu lagi. Okay, yeah. very interesting. Uh, rectification of repair. Kalau ada leaking, bocor. So, masa kita, so, um, macam kalau kita beli rumah melalui auction, is as it varies. What you see is what you get, right? But when you buy sub sale, it's also as is very sama. Cuma kadang-kadang pembeli boleh negotiate dengan owner untuk buat um, repairs. So maybe rumah tu ada bocor. Pada masa dia orang pergi beli tak ada bocor. But dalam masa tiga bulan empat bulan tu hujan lebat, baru uh, that, then you will see leaking appearing. Alright, then you nampak uh, the stain on the wall. Okay, then bila dia dah masuk rumah, dia kata, eh, masa saya datang inspect rumah, masa nak beli tu mana ada bocor. So, dia suruh owner uh, repair. Owner pula kata, eh, as is where is, mana saya nak repair? Saya tak setuju apa-apa. So, there are uh, situasi di mana kita tak boleh, pejabat peguam tak boleh nak release kunci, tak boleh nak release duit pada, dah dah release kunci pada pembeli. Uh, tapi kita kena hold dulu duit nak release kepada owner sebab pembeli tak... Uh, Uh, they are not satisfied. Dia orang hmm. rasa macam kena tipu. Eh, ke, tak boleh lah. Ada bocor berapa kalau I nak repair berapa. So, they have situation like that. So, on repair, repair work. Who is to do repair work? So, normally in a sub sale, it's always in everybody's mind that kalau repair work, owner kena buat. So, automatically kita akan push owner untuk repair. Hmm. But as opposed to uh, an auction property, again, Transparency. You already know how your house is going to be. So like what uh, Shamila explained tadi, masa you dah bid and keluar court, you rasa satisfied. You are so happy. You have bought the property for that price and you already know what is the condition of your property. You expect that whatever happens inside the property, it's your responsibility. Betul. Adalah tanggung, tanggung betul, jawab betul. pembeda. Betul? Betul. Betul. Yeah. betul. I, I, I like your point. Because we really have to expect it to Uh, when we buy melalui sub sale selalunya kita ada this expectation oh kalau ada apa-apa repair dan sebagainya saya boleh pun kembali kepada owner dan harga yang kita beli pun bukan harga murah tetapi dalam lelongan pula dia lain kita memang tahu uh, harga ataupun um, wang uh, nilai yang kita nak tentukan untuk bidak selalunya melibatkan satu harga termasuk 
diskaun yang kita nak letakkan uh, untuk set off kemungkinan repair-repair yang mungkin muncul ya dalam uh, rumah tersebut. So uh, there's no way we we'll, we we'll go into problem kalau uh, melalui lelungan awam. Itu yang kita boleh beritahu. So kita ada satu soalan daripada Erina. Erina, I would like to take your question. Uh, maybe I can pass it to Shamila to answer on this part. Question dia ialah voluntary auction. I think uh, voluntary auction dia cakap. Actually voluntary ya. Uh, voluntary auction dengan foreclosure auction. Which one is better? So I think maybe we can compile it as one. Sebenarnya there's no different. Maybe I can just elaborate a little bit before Shamila can answer on this. A voluntary auction dengan foreclosure ni sebenarnya is is a auction platform dengan dua situasi di berbeza Erina. Situasi pertama you have no choice. Mahkamah telah mengambil keputusan bahawa you tak payah duit maka rumah kena lelong. Dalam situasi kedua pula dia adalah mengenai dengan voluntary. Bermaksud tanpa mendapatkan Hikmat, agent Saya jual melalui lelong Cara lelongan Platform lelongan Dalam dua senario ni Selalunya Bahagian condition of sale Telah ditentukan awal-awal lagi So nak compare mana satu yang baik uh, I don't see the difference Tapi mungkin Syamila mungkin can highlight The bit Voluntary auction and foreclosure auction. What would be which one is better? For me, I don't see anything better. I, I think both are using the auction platform, so I don't see the difference. How about you, Shamila? Okay, voluntary auction is auction by the owner themselves, huh? where the owner is selling the property by way of auction. Whereas foreclosure auction is uh, the bank is selling the property as the chargee of the property. So the bank, uh, the, the owner couldn't pay the loan. So the bank is selling off the property to settle the loan to, or to recover the loan. Okay. In um, auction by uh, bank, uh, uh, where I'm talking about property auction by banks. Foreclosure. Foreclosure. Oh, foreclosure, foreclosure auction. Harga ditentukan oleh uh, juru nilai melalui satu uh, penilaian kepada harta tersebut. Okay, so uh, juru nilai dilantik kalau kes mahkamah tinggi juru nilai dilantik oleh mahkamah tinggi ma uh, juru nilai akan menilai harga itu mengikut harga pasaran dan property uh, har harga uh, hartana itu akan dijual melalui lelongan awam. Manakala bagi option by owner, uh, di mana harta-harta dijual oleh tuan punya sendiri men menggunakan platform auction, eh? harga ditentukan oleh tuan punya. Harga yang dia nak tu dia yang akan tentukan. Saya nak harga harta saya dijual untuk harga sekian-sekian. Bukannya ditentukan oleh juru nilai. Okay, so itu uh, ada sikit perbezaan dari segi harga. Di mana uh, untuk auction melalui lelongan awam ataupun foreclosure, harga ditentukan melalui uh, mengikut harga pasaran yang sebenar oleh juru nilai. Okay? Tetapi ya, kedua-dua proses auction ini dari segi ketulusan adalah sama. Kerana seperti yang kita bincang tadi, ketulusan di mana kamu sebagai pembida akan memberi peluang untuk membida harga itu kamu akan terlibat dalam proses tawar-menawar itu di mana harga akan semakin naik dan kamu akan membida dan same same thing happens to uh, harga harta yang dijual melalui uh, lelongan oleh penjual sendiri juga melibatkan proses yang sama so uh, kepuasan hati yang sama di mana pembeli dapat membeli dengan uh, tahu apa, apa yang telah berlaku dan dia telah beli harga itu mungkin dia akan rasa lebih puas hati lebih gembira uh, jadi okay. itu ketulusan sama saja alright so that means tiada apa-apa perbezaan Erina 
Okay, um, so I would like to do, take to another top, another part of kelebihan dia. Konsep. Ada harta yang memerlukan konsep. Apa bezanya antara harta nak subsidi jual beli secara at arm's length menggunakan ejen dan sebagainya dan lelungan. Bagaimana pula dengan konsen ataupun uh, in bahasa Malaysia dipanggil apa konsen? Kebenaran pihak kebenaran. kuasa negeri. Uh, kebenaran kuasa negeri. Maybe uh, Sharon can take up the debate and uh, Sharon uh, Shamila can uh, continue on that. Okay. So uh, when we talk about kalau kita bercakap mengenai konsen, uh, konsen is uh, kebenaran pindah milik Uh, atau kebenaran mencagar tanah. So you ada dua jenis konsen, ke, uh, dua jenis kebenaran. Satu kebenaran pindah milik, konsen to transfer. Kebenaran mencagar, konsen to charge. Alright. Uh, bagaimana bagaimana kita tahu sama ada harta tanah kita memerlukan kebenaran daripada pihak berkuasa negeri? Kita kena tengok uh, geran tanah. Okay, strata title or individual title. Okay, dalam geran tanah ada sekatan-sekatan kepentingan. Alright. So apa yang akan ditulis di dalam sekatan kepentingan ini adalah tanah ini tidak boleh dipindah milik, dijual, dipajak, digadai tanpa kebenaran pihak berkuasa negeri. Alright. So itu adalah so bila kita membeli harta tanah yang ada uh, individual title atau surat title yang ada sekatan berikut yang ter, seperti mana yang saya bagi tahu tadi dan kita perlu mendapatkan kebenaran berkuasa kebenaran pindah milik daripada pejabat tanah. Okey, ini adalah untuk kes subsil. Alright. So, dalam kes subsil a uh, geran atas nama penjual, owner a uh, dan owner nak jual kepada pembeli, owner kena dapatkan kebenaran daripada pejabat tanah untuk menukar pindah milik kepada pembeli. Alright. Dan kalau pembeli uh, mengambil uh, loan daripada bank, uh, mengambil uh, daripada institusi kewangan, uh, then uh, bank pula akan mendapat, the lawyer bagi pihak bank akan mendapatkan kebenaran mencagar atas pihak bank. Alright, so there are two jenis, uh, dua jenis kebenaran. Alright? Perlu, perlu, nah. di, perlu diperolehi ya. Perlu diperolehi untuk kes subsil. Perlu diperolehi tanpa konsen tidak boleh buat pindah milik. Alright. So uh, dalam kes auction, uh, high court auction, kalau uh, geran itu sudah berada di atas tanah uh, nama owner, alright. Then uh, konsen uh, how uh, Konsen dilepaskan, you, you tidak perlu mendapatkan kebenaran. Because it's by way of, uh, uh, lelongan itu berlaku uh, berlaku dengan court order. So, dari dari dekat uh, Kanun Tanah Negara, National Land Code, clearly mention uh, melalui court order, then uh, kebenaran pindah milik tidak dikecualikan. Dikecualikan. So, hmm. kita tidak perlu mendapatkan kebenaran daripada uh, pihak berkuasa negeri. So, uh, coming back to the topic tadi, save time, kita mengurangkan masa kita tadi. Ini oh, adalah salah satu yeah, okay, okay. prospek. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. ini adalah salah satu faktor untuk menjimatkan masa kalau membeli harta tanah lelong uh, yang uh, yang ada sekatan. So, you save three months, you save four months, it's a lot of time. Hmm. Okay. Okay, okay. Shamila, maybe you can add on on that, Shamila. Yeah. Um, bila kita beli har melalui, uh, harta melalui lelongan awam dari mahkamah tinggi, ya, uh, memang terdapat keistimewaan uh, untuk syarat ini, iaitu kebenaran pihak berkuasa negeri tidak diperlukan uh, di mana terdapat sekatan kepentingan untuk harta itu. Dan uh, ini adalah uh, mungkin kerana kerana um, Salah satu aspek yang uh, kenapa diberi keistimewaan ini juga kerana uh, tempo penyempurnaan harta yang dibeli melalui lelongan awam adalah 120 hari ya. Maka uh, kerana sebarang perlanjutan tidak akan dilayan, mahkamah tinggi 
they are very strict. 120 days you have to complete, then the registrar will sign the necessary document to transfer the property. So, uh, ini adalah satu keistimewaan kerana mereka tidak perlu uh, uh, melengahkan masa lah untuk pergi apply consent and all that because proses consent pun akan mengambil masa dalam masa satu hingga dua bulan. Yang itu pun yang paling cepat lah. Jadi untuk uh, menjimatkan masa dan juga menjimatkan kos, ini adalah satu syarat untuk harta-harta yang dijual melalui lelongan awam di Mahkamah Tinggi di bawah kanun tanah negara. So, maksudnya memang kalau orang buat konsen pihak uh, berkuasa negeri uh, tidak perlu. Ya. Yeah. Okay. So we we have uh, more time. Uh, so we have another. 10 to 15 minutes, we can uh, conclude. I would like can, to... Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Sorry, Jiwan, I, I would like to add on because um, for high court auction, like what we talked about tadi, uh, untuk auction, kalau ada sekatan, tidak perlu mendapatkan kebenaran. But this is going to, this is a bit technical, um, but those uh, situ, situation where uh, tanah, bila harta tanah ini dilelong, owner tidak buat penukaran nama lagi tapi geran dah keluar strata title has been issued but per, uh, the defaulter the owner tidak membuat penukaran nama lagi so uh, tanah itu masih atas nama pemaju alright so in that situation dalam situasi itu kita perlu men, uh, menghantar surat pihak peguam akan menghantar surat kepada pihak pemaju untuk mendapatkan uh, direct transfer So untuk uh, menukar pindah milik ini daripada pemaju terus kepada pembida. Okey, dari segi itu kita perlu mendapat dan uh, kalau uh, geran itu uh, ada sekatan kepentingan, kita perlu mendapatkan uh, kebenaran daripada pihak berkuasa negeri. Oh. Sebab, sebab itu saya cakap it's a bit technical but um, this is the dua situasi dia. Untuk case auction, always remember uh, that kalau geran itu sudah ada atas nama uh, owner, then penggadai, uh, penggadai. Pengga penggadai. Yes. Okay, then uh, consent tidak perlu uh, di di dikecualikan, di telah, akan dikecualikan. But kalau uh, the geran masih atas nama pemaju dan kita perlu mendapatkan perlu membuat penukaran nama daripada pemaju kepada pembida then yes kita perlu mendapatkan kebenaran daripada pejabat tanah. So di mana ada technical uh, expertise uh, perlu diteliti uh, dalam dua aspek yang tadi yang Sharon share tadi berkenaan dengan nama uh, mesti telah dimasukkan dalam keran dan nama yang belum lagi dimasukkan dalam keran tapi sudah dilelong ada dua situasi berbeza di situ ada technical expertise yang diperlukan so saya rasa kalau siapa-siapa yang ada masalah dan sebagainya boleh jumpa dengan Syamila dengan Syarat saya ingat daripada situ uh, bolehlah uh, kita permudahkan lagi cara-cara untuk uh, mendapatkan konsen atau tidak daripada Syarat dan Syamila So you have any issues on that part, maybe you all can contact directly Sharon and Shamila on that matter. Okay, so uh, Sharon, I would like to go into the next part of our benefits ataupun uh, kelebihan membeli. Uh, we also mentioned about sekarang semua lelongan, um, masih lagi lelongan yang dibuat di mahkamah, tapi akan ada lelongan yang akan dibuat melalui Alamaya, online. So mungkin uh, Shamila can uh, describe a little bit on this uh, online bidding thing. Okay. Uh, sekarang kita ada konsep e-lelong. Huh? Kebanyakan uh, mahkamah saya rasa telah pun memulakan konsep e-lelong di mana uh, e-lelong tidak melibatkan uh, auctioner, tidak, mel tidak melibatkan juru lelong di antara mahkamah dan pembida. Okey, di mana mereka akan uh, buat, buat segala-galanya melalui online, uh, online bidding. Okey, ini adalah satu uh, kebaikan jugalah kerana 
kita uh, kadang-kadang kita sibuk, kita tak, tak sempat nak buat uh, kita tak sempat nak pergi uh, ke tempat yang ditentukan iaitu ke mahkamah ataupun uh, mungkin kita sedang bekerja tidak dapat mengambil cuti ya. Jadi ini akan memberi faedah kepada mereka yang tertentu uh, di mana lelongan dibuat secara online. Uh, you just have to spend time sometime uh, with your computer. Uh, you can always bid a property through online. Okay. okay. Uh, save the hassle of bidders uh, from being stuck in the traffic jam and all that. So it's it's really time saving and also convenient for the parties. Alright, Sharon, maybe you can add on a little bit on the online bidding thing. Uh, again, you are saving a lot of time. Uh, you just need to have your laptop. You just need to have a proper Wi-Fi. Uh, and you just need to know the correct website to go to and bid for the property, right? Uh, same thing, syarat-syarat uh, the seperti mana yang kita cakap tadi, all the process is the same. Uh, lepas uh, the, the, the memorandum will have the syarat-syarat yang sama. The only difference is now you tak perlu berada di sana. You boleh berada di mana-mana untuk membeli uh, auction properties. So I think this would actually go again in saving time and uh, helping and, and like what um, Irina is it? She had a concern just now about how uh, runner, bank sends runner. So in if that is true, I mean, we, we still doubt that, but if that is true, all this is going to be safe. That's not, that's never going to happen. You you are saving um, even all those this, things from... Even before this, I, I, I doubt it. Yeah. It would have happened, but in online, definitely there's no way. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you very much. So maybe we have come to the last part of our uh, uh, webinar. So I would like to share again to our viewers. Our idea is actually to communicate the knowledge uh, and share our knowledge to the public, because we believe through our experience, uh, Sharon and Shamila in this manner, uh, that uh, about 85% of Malaysians not aware of what is auction all about and losing a lot of money by, by participating without knowing and by not participating because no enough information so you're losing opportunity because there's a lot of opportunities available affordable housings are plenty but you are not buying another investor is buying it they buy they refurbish they sell it to you back why don't you go and buy it on your own so these are the factors that made the existence of Koshi's community. So Koshi's community is here to be the center for auction information, authenticity, and bidding knowledge. So you please uh, visit our YouTube channel. We have some videos there and subscribe to our channel. Koshi community is our channel name. And uh, please like and uh, share our Koshi Community Facebook to all your contacts. Our Koshi Community website will be up maybe after Raya. Uh, we have a very beautiful concept whereby we're going to share all our videos, comments, discussion, and uh, opportunities, and also whatever legal issues uh, from our speakers and our contacts. So all this will be slowly built up. Uh, and I hope it is beneficial to the people of Malaysia. So ini tak ada apa-apa hidden agenda. Kita tak ada apa subscription. It's all free. What you need to do is share with your friends. Help us to do that. Because this is not available outside. Yang ada semua 
you kena bayar dulu sebelum you jadi member dan uh, setiap knowledge yang kami share pada hari ini dan masa-masa yang akan datang is through our experience auctioneer for the past 15 years we have uh, Shamila for the past 20 years doing convincing and we have Sharon actually doing more than 15 years actually she got experience with the club convincing club and she took her uh, uh, LLB and uh, she is a practicing lawyer um, expert in uh, convincing as well so we have this group of people sincerely um, would like to share our knowledge to the public so with that I would like to conclude for event for the day uh, Sharon maybe our parting uh, message from you oh yes okay uh, stay tuned uh, I think Erina has been with us uh, from the very beginning yes. so uh, <laughs> those who have uh, joined us just continue uh, every week there is some something to learn about uh, every week so we we are not like what jivan says there's no hidden agenda we are doing this to educate everyone um, and uh, we are doing this genuinely so just stay tuned every week there's an interesting topic which is going to be shared and trust me it's never going to end it's going to be more and more and more and by that time you know that you will become a property auction expert uh, yes. yeah you know so this is what we all actually want um, everyone to be. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you very much, Sharon. Shamila? Um, I have a little advice uh, for those uh, who are interested to buy properties, property investors, or especially the